Okay, so let's see if you understand percent well enough to solve this problem. And we're talking about the percent of increase. So we have a home that went from $250,000 in value up to $300,000. So we're trying to determine the percent of increase on the original price. Now feel free to use a calculator, but uh, I'm going to suggest try to figure this out without using a calculator. But if you think you need one, that's perfectly fine. Either way, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. All right, so one more time, we're trying to determine the percent of increase on the original price. So we have a home that went from $250,000 to $300,000 in value. All right, so let's go to take a look at the correct solution. So we have this home, it went up to 300,000. Uh, that's a 20% increase in value, okay? So you bought the home and let's say uh, one year later, it went up to 20% uh, in value. So if you bought it for 250,000 and it went up 20%, your value of your home is $300,000. So that's pretty awesome. But what's even more awesome if, is uh, if you got this right, that's pretty cool. That means that you understand percent pretty well. And I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of reason through this. There is a percent of increase formulas, percent of decrease formulas, but let's just use some common sense here. Okay, so before I show you the... Um, the work. What happened here, mathematically speaking? Well, there was an increase in value, obviously, but how much was the increase? Well, the increase is $50,000, right? So this house went up $50,000. So we want to consider this uh, increase, this amount that it went up, and we want to uh, express this in terms of percent. So how do I do that? Okay, with this $50,000, what do I need to compare from? Well, anytime you're thinking about something, um, the percent of increase or decrease, you always want to be uh, uh, referencing your starting point, okay? This is our end point. We went up $50,000 here. So when we're trying to make a percent comparison, you have to compare it to that original amount, okay, not the end amount. So let's go ahead and get into the actual solution right now. Okay, so obviously, you know, if you uh, don't see that this is $50,000, let's go ahead and find the difference. So we're going to take that $300,000 and subtract away $250,000. That's $50,000. Now, if you went two fifty dollars minus $300,000, that's negative, right? You would end up with a negative $50,000. You could see this is a positive increase, so you want to find the absolute uh, value of that just means that hey you're gonna uh, the this increase is uh, positive right so the house increased a positive fifty thousand dollars that we kind of already uh, uh, talked about that so the question is this okay fifty thousand dollars is what percent of two hundred and fifty thousand okay so remember we always want to um, when it comes to percent of increase and decrease problems, you always want to start from that original amount. How much did the original amount go up? So you're not thinking about the 300,000, you're thinking about the 250,000, your starting amount. How much from where you started from, what was the percent of increase? So really, this problem distills down to this. 50,000 is what percent of 250,000? So how do you uh, figure this out? Well, when you're trying to determine percent, a great way to think of um, what percent is, is a ratio between a par uh, some part out of a whole, okay? Some part out of a whole. So this 50,000 would be the part, okay? How much is 50,000? That part out of the whole of 250,000, okay? So this is kind of the basic setup for figuring out these type of percent problems. By the way, if this particular problem is a little confusing for you, then you want to start working on more basic percent problems. Uh, a couple of uh, quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of percent problems on my, U additional percent problems uh, on my YouTube channel. 
And I have two courses uh, I would uh, look in my MathL program, my Math Foundations course, and my pre-algebra course if I want to check out as well if you need to review basic mathematics. But here's the deal. We need to figure out 50,000 out of 250,000, and we need to express this as a percent. So let's suppose you were doing this without the aid of a calculator, right? Your teacher said, hey, you don't need a calculator. So the first thing you want to do is simplify this fraction. So when you reduce fractions and we have zeros, uh, you can cross cancel a zero for a zero. And if you didn't know that, you could do that just like that. So this 50,000 out of 250,000 is really uh, the fraction five out of 25. So we got to figure out what five out of 25 is in terms of percent. And let's go ahead and look at that now. Okay, so five out of 25, and of course I could reduce this down further, right, uh, as one fifth. And if you saw that, let's actually do that right now. So one fifth is these type of, uh, is kind of a typical type fraction like one half. If I asked you, one half is, is how much in terms of percent? Well, if you said, oh, that's 50% is the same thing as uh, the fraction one half, that's excellent. How about uh, one third, okay? If you're like, oh, isn't that like 33%? Yes, right? Or three fourths, what would three fourths be? Let's just do a little pop quiz here. If you said 75%, you're spot on. One fifth is one of these basic fractions as well. So anyways, I wanted to cross count these zeros. We have five uh, 25ths or one uh, fifth, but I'll just leave it as five 25ths here and you'll see uh, why here in a second. I'm going to leave it as 5 25ths. Okay, so you can go in your calculator and take 5 divided by 25, you get 0.2, or 1 divided by 5, you get 0.2, or maybe you, did, you would just know that 1 fifth is equal to 20%. But if you didn't, you could simply just use your calculator. And now we have to be able to go from a decimal to a percent. So how do you go from a decimal to percent? Well, you multiply by 100, and that's effectively the same thing as moving the decimal point two places to the right. Okay, so if I move that point two right here, two places to the right, I'm going to end up with 20.0 uh, or 20.0 percent. So there you go. That is 20 percent. That is the percent of increase. Okay, so 50. Thousand is 20% of 250,000. But let's suppose um, uh, you didn't have a calculator and you didn't want to do this work and you didn't know that one fifth uh, was 0.2. How else could we do this? Well, if you understand the definition of percent, before we continue with the video, please take a quick second to help me out. So, what I need you to do is to hit that subscribe button. This really does help my content reach as many people as possible on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you know when my latest videos are posted. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the video. Then this is a pretty easy problem as well. Okay, you could come at it this way. Percent by definition is a ratio. It's a fraction where the denominator is 100. It's where we compare a, nu uh, a number to 100. That is the technical definition of percent. So if I have this fraction, 5 over 25, and I say, you know what? If I multiply that 25 by 4, I'll get 100, okay? So uh, if I'm going to multiply the denominator by uh, 4, then i got to multiply the numerator by 4. So 5 times 4 is 20. Now I have a fraction, a number that I'm comparing to 100. So 20 is being compared to 100. Uh, so this is my percent. That's 20%. So a number being compared to 100, i.e. the denominator is uh, 100, that number, in fact, is uh, the percent. So that is 20%. So that's another way you could think about um, uh, you know, calculating the actual solution here. But again, there are formulas for the percent of increase and percent of decrease um, type of percent problems that you will face, you will definitely face uh, in mathematics. But I like to just kind of reason through this with common sense. But uh, anyways, percent is absolute is an absolute must, okay? Whether you are a math student or, or not, you definitely want to understand percent. And there's all sorts of uh, different flavors and varieties of uh, percent prompts. So just don't walk away from this and thinking, oh, I can do all uh, sorts of percent prompts. Well, you know, not so, you know, don't move so quickly on your conclusion. Challenge yourself, okay? There's all different types of percent prompts, as I stated. So if you want to know more about percent, um, just follow through with those suggestions that I stated earlier. 
But if this particular video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics uh, adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.